You're new? Not exactly. Thought I have been away for a while. Vacation? <laughs> no, I was uh, living in Chicago. So you're back in the neighborhood. What brings you back? Family. Roots run deep. Blood runs thick. I didn't think I'd seen you before. That's uh, really pretty observant of you, considering the number of nurses working in this hospital. It must be the eagle eye. I figure it's either being bored or watching the nurses go by. It's better than counting sheep. <laughs> so that's what you consider as entertainment? No, no, no. Don't get me wrong. I'm very aware of how hard you angels of mercy work. It must be a thankless task. Oh, no. In fact, you'd be surprised at how rewarding it is, Mr. Blake. Mitch. Pardon? Mitch Blake. Oh. And your name? A frame? <laughs> Alice. Uh, I think I know that name. It's not that common, is it? No, it isn't. Do you know Jamie Frame? Indirectly. Relative? I guess you could say that. Jamie's my husband's son. And Jamie's father's in Bay City. He died quite some time ago. I'm sorry. Trust me to put my foot in it. I'm not one for subtleties. No, I disagree. A lot of people in Bay City ask me about Jamie when they hear my name. I don't see him too often, though. Did you hear about what happened to him? the docks? Yes, I did. I was at the Matthews home when Russ had to come in. I heard it could have been uh, rather bad for him if it hadn't been for some other guy that was with him. Yes, the, uh, the other man got what fate had intended for Jamie, I'm afraid. Is it bad? Severe concussion. He's not going to be up and around for a while. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but I would imagine Jamie's thinking his lucky stars. Well, Jamie's always been a lucky one. He had a guardian angel from the start, being raised by the Corys like he was. Uh, I put that in the wrong column. This is the only patient in the world who weighs 98.6 degrees. I've cut some white out. It's a great invention. Oh, thanks. Um, I've been wondering, what do you know about Mitch Blake? No, I don't know much. Neither does he, at least temporarily. But he is staying here. I mean, in Bay City. Mm-hmm. That seems to be the plan. You have to blow on that stuff. Oh, okay. Well, uh, what does our mysterious stranger do? Well, I wasn't around by himself, but from what I'm told, he was quite active. Professionally, he used to be part owner of the supper club. Oh, very nice. Also very convenient. For what? Dinner dates. I understand our Mr. Blake was not exactly monkish. Probably not. And it also sounds like his connection with the supper club was in the past tense. Well, he, he, yes, he said he sold out his interest, and he's, he's bought a new interest in the um, sporting life. Oh, well. Oh. That should be a wonderful incentive for the women of Bay City to get into shape. Don't leave the top off. It dries out. Sorry. Now, why this sudden interest? Oh, your star patient? He's not my star patient. He's just a patient. Well, surely, Dr. Delaney, you have noticed that Mr. Blake isn't suffering from terminal unattractiveness. I'm surprised at you. This is not a very professional discussion at all. I never said it was. Yeah, well, that's in order now. You know, I really can't help but wonder, though. Wonder what? Now, is this a professional wonder or...? <laughs> Not professional. I saw it coming. That obvious, huh? Yeah. I don't know. I just wonder what really happened between Rachel and Mitch Blake. Well, Rachel said she and Mitch had a relationship for a reason. I'm sure. And then only once, and it was in order to protect Mac. Do you really believe that? I have no reason not to. Well, I've known Rachel for a long, long time. And when I was married to Steve Frame, well, she wasn't quite as disinterested or as faithful and pure as she'd have you believe.
afraid you were going to stand me up. No, no. I wouldn't do that to you. I'm sorry I had to take care of something. And did you? As best as I could, which isn't saying that much. You're still upset, aren't you? You want to talk about it? No. No, not really. Your being here helps a lot. Well, where do you want to go? Well, my apartment's upstairs. What's wrong? It's nothing. I'm sorry. Oh, Mitch. Talk to me. Talk to me. Tell me. It's all right. I just happened. think I want to be alone. Um, well. Sure. Um, will you be okay? Yeah, I'm fine. care of yourself. Rachel. Who is it? Down. May I come in? Sure. Is this a social visit? Not exactly. Mac wanted to see Amanda, so I came over to pick her up. Mac wanted you to pick up Amanda. Why? Well, I told you. He wants to see her. But he could have called me. I would have brought her over to see him. Well, I have to admit that's my fault. Yeah, I just bet it is. When Mac mentioned that he wanted to see Amanda, I offered to pick her up. That was very thoughtful. Rachel, I care for Amanda, too. Well, you certainly better make it look like you do or you'll lose Mac's interest. But I don't have to appreciate your fascination, your sudden fascination for my children. I would hardly call it a sudden fascination, Rachel. Especially where Jamie is concerned. Oh, no? No. Jamie is my late husband's son. That does give us a rather close tie. I can't imagine why. Look, Rachel, I spent a lot of time with Jamie when he was growing up, and I think I helped him through a few of the childhood traumas. That's just how I'm trying to help him now. You also created quite a few. Now, how are you trying to help him now? You are aware that he and Mac are not on the best of terms at the moment, aren't you? Yes, I'm well aware of that. But that has to do with both of them. They have to sort that out. There's no reason for you to be involved in that. That's where you're wrong, Rachel. If I can help Mac through this very difficult time, I intend to. <laughs> That's what this is all about, isn't it? What are you talking about? Why aren't you interested in Matthew, Alice? He's Matthew. one of my children, too. But he doesn't count, does he? You can only use Amanda and Jamie to try and get close to Mac not true, Rachel. Of course it is. I don't need your children to get close to Mac. Then why the sudden maternal in interest in my children? That's for Mac's benefit. It has nothing to do with trying to get close to either one of them, does it? You know, if you believe that, Rachel, you're absolutely blind. No. The real problem here is that you can't let go of Mac, can you? First you walk out on him, then you think you've still got some kind of hold over him. Well, you don't. You've hurt him too deeply. And you were certainly there to pick up the pieces, weren't you? Yes. As a matter of fact, I was. And I'm glad I could help him. Mac deserves a woman 
who can be constant in her love. Yeah, well, you're nothing if not constant, Alice. I care about Mac a great deal, Rachel. Yeah, I think that's fairly evident. How are you? How are you, Alice? What's going on? Hello, Mitch. I'm here to pick up Amanda. Mac wants to see her. Is that all right with you? No, it really isn't. I'll get her. Thank you, Mitch. I'm going to do everything in my power to keep you away from my children. Well, it's not going to be as easy as you think, Rachel. Oh? Please, tell me why. Because when Mac is released from the hospital, I'm going to be staying at his home. I'm going to be his nurse. That's classic. Thank you. 